by Jonathan Dagkam Nino Bus. I am here in front of you stating an insight about the Northern Mindanao. Northern Mindanao is the second most populous region in Mindanao, next to Davao region. In Northern Mindanao, there is Bukid Nod, Kamigen, Lano del Norte, Misamis Occidental, and Misamis Oriental. In Bukid Nod, it is known as the pineapple capital of the world. And Kamigen is an ancestral homecoming. Lano del Norte is a land of beauty and bounty. Next is the Misamis Occidental. It is the Christmas capital of Mindanao. And Misamis Oriental, the Mindanao's nature front. As you can see, that is the map of the Northern Mindanao. There you can see where is the location of Northern Mindanao. And you can see in the Kamigan, the location of Kamigan, uh, Bukid Nun, Lano del Norte, Misamis Oriental, and the Misamis Occidental. In Northern Mindanao, there is a nine cities and there are seven composite city cities. Namely, Malaybalay City, Valencia, Valencia City, Oroquita City, the Ozama City, Tangob City, El Salvador City, Gingoog City. And there are two highly urbanized cities, namely Iligan City, Cagayan de Oro City. And the regional capital region of the region northern Mindanao is the Cagayan de Oro City. There, you can see that the location of the northern Mindanao is the north, the, you can see the Mindanao Sea, and in the west is the western Mindanao, and east is the Caraga region, and in south is the region 11 and region Region C 11 and Region 12. The physical characteristics of Northern Mindanao. You can see the total land of area of the Northern Mindanao, 2,049,602 hectares. And then more than 60% of Northern Mindanao's total land area are classified as forest land. So the 40% 40, 40 there is a water water area or the um, karagatan. And then its seas abound with fish and other marine products. The chief industries in that region is that there is agriculture, fishing, forestry, food processing, livestock raising. There you can see a lot of opportunities. And then the crops. What are the crops you can see in the northern Mindanao? You can see palay, banana, sugarcane, coconut, and corn, and also the pineapple. Um, the contribution to economic development of the Northern Mindanao, the economy of Northern Mindanao is the largest regional economy in the island of Mindanao. It is the economy of Northern Mindanao. It is mainly agricultural. As you can see, there are many crops. There are bananas, palay. They are known for that um, industry. Next is the famous Del, no Del Monte Philippines in Bukidnon, shaped to the entire Philippines and Asia Pacific region. The August 4 to 7 hydroelectric plants in Elegant City supplies most of its electrical power in Mindanao. And in Bukid Nun, it is tops of all the other all the other provinces in its agriculture output, especially in corn, pineapple, and rice. In Misamis Occidental, it has the largest area of brackish water fish ponds in the region. And in Gingoog City, it is home to some of the country's biggest lumber enterprises. In the Samis Oriental, now fast becoming the center of industry, trade, and commerce in the region. And there is one more, Kigayan, the Oro City. It is long held as the economic center of the region, transportation center, home to major industrial and manufacturing firms in the country. In Bukid Nun, don't forget that Bukid Nun has one of the largest pineapple plantations in the world. And in the Balay Balay City, the capital city of Bukid Nun, it is the center of cattle ranching enterprises and extensive agriculture. So first, let's tackle Bukidnon. Bukidnon is the highland paradise in the heart of Mindanao. There, you can see the location of Bukidnon. The northwest, you can see the Misamis Oriental. And the, the east is the Agusan del Sur. Southeast is the Davao del Norte. And southwest, the Lano del Sur. And then south is the Kutab Kutabato. The capital city of Bukidnon is the Malay Balay City. It is the eighth largest province, province in the country. Bukidnon means the people of the mountains and was named after the tribes who inhabited the mountains of the area. In 1903, Bukidnon was made a separate province and was formally recognized as such on March 10, 1917 under Republic Act No. 2711. Bukidnon, it is the home to the finest and sweetest pineapple in the country. It is the biggest cattle producing province in the region. It is a major industries and resources of Bukidnon, the pineapple um, industry.
it is the one of the country's richest in biodiversity and endemic species of flora and fauna. The watershed of Mindanao leads to the production of rice in northern Mindanao, second largest producer of corn in the country. The festival of Bukidnon is the famous festival of the Bukidnon is the Kaamulan Festival in Malay Balay City. It is held to celebrate the culture and the tradition of the seven ethnic tribal groups Bukidnon, Higaunon, Talandig, and, and, and another, other tribes that is originally inhabit the, the province. Kaamulan, it is a gathering for a purpose. Uh, it is a ritual, a wedding ceremony, a Thanksgiving festival during harvest time, and a Tamulan comes from the indigenous Binukid word anul, amul, meaning to gutter. And the natural attractions I saw in the Bukidnon is the Lake Apo. It is very clean. The place is the cleanest and the greenest land, inland body of water in northern Mindanao. The Center for Ecological Development and Research, or CEDAR, is a protected forest reserve area with a hiking trail and under the canopies of aged and old trees. Pampuho one is very tragic. I've been there and I feel so, my fear is being challenged. It is the Philippines' first unicycle where one can ride a bicycle across a 600 feet cable hanging in a 100 feet deep ravine. Spring Resorts in Maramag. It is the spring resort capital of Bukidnon. It is one of the amazing resorts I've visited in Bukidnon. Next is the historical attraction. The Monastery of Transfer Transfiguration. It is the magnificent pyramid chapel was designed by the late national artist Leandro Luxin. It, this home of the Benedictine monks is also the most popular wedding destination in Bukidnon. As you can see, the roof of it is um, pyramid shape. Next is the Camigan Island. Camigan Island is an ancestral homecoming. It's a very um, uh, popular also popular also in a place that has many mounts. Mountain. It was known that Kamigan Island is a born of fire because Kamig Kamigan Island have Mount Kibokibok, Mount Mambajao, Mount Ginsilban, Mount Tempuong, Mount Vulcan, Mount Uhai, and Mount Tres. Kamigan's highest volcano is Mount Tempuong with 1,600 meters, followed by Mount Mambaho Mambajao with 1,400 meters, and Mount Kibokibok with 1,040 meters. There is a location of Kamigin. The north, the relative location is in the north, Gindol, there, you can see the Gindolman Bay. And in the west, you can see the Bohol Sea. And in south east, you can see the Gingoog Bay. And in east, you can see the Butuan Bay. The capital city of Kamigin is a Mambadjao. Kamigin Island, Kamigin is derived from the native word Kamagong. Kamago is a species of the Ibunit tree that thrives near Lake Mainit in the province of Surigao del Norte. Earlier inhabitants of the island are Manubos from the Surigao region. There you can see the pictures of the Manubo tribe. And then Kamigin was part of Misamis Oriental until uh, 1958 when it became a sub-province. It was made into a separate province on June 18, 1966, but was formally inaugurated only in 1968. The cultural attractions you can see in Kamigin there are festivals called Lanzones Festival. Lanzones Festival, it is a typical, Lanzones is a typical tropical fruit, and they say that the, it is the sweetest, the sweetest fruit that grows in Kamigin. This is to celebrate that the fruit harvest, which attracts a lot of tourists. So, when you say Kamigin, it was known about the Lanzo, there are many Lanzones there. When you heard, I want to go to Kamigin, what's with that um, city? So, you will learn from my videos that in that city, there are many Lansones. And the houses, the people there, um, and the streets are decorated with Lansones during that festival. The cultural attraction, you can see the Panaad. Panaad, it is a particular week. It is a walking, the walkway at old volcano where are placed the statues representing the stations of the cross. As you can see, the station of the cross, it is in the um, walkway of the volcano. Next is the historical attractions. Historical attractions that um, one of their famous is the Cross Marker and Sunken Cemetery. It is located in Bumbun, Bumbun, Katarman. A, a huge cross marker, as you can see, has been installed by the provincial government to mark the community cemetery that sunk during the 1871 volcanic holocaust. 
Next is the Old Catholic Church. It is a grim testimony to the devastation caused by the eruption of Mount Vulcan Daan in 1871. Next is the natural attraction. What are the natural attractions, attractions that you can see in the Kamikin? First is the Mount Kibo Kibo. As they are popular with mountains, as they are the board of fire, there you can see Mount Hibukibuk, the only active volcano in the island. Mount Hibukibuk has crater lake at the peak and has steam outlets abound. The peak also offers a breathtaking view of the islands of Cebu, the Negros, and also the Bohol. Next is the Lano del Norte. Lano del Norte is known as the land of beauty and bounty. The location of Lano del Norte, the relative location, in the north you can see the Iligan Bay, in the northwest you can see the province of Misamis Occidental, and in south you can see the Lano del Sur. The capital city of Lano del Norte is Tubod City. And the old but the old capital of Lano del Norte is Iligan City. In history, in 1950, Lanao became a regular province. Nine years later, on May 22, 1959, it was split into Lano del Norte and Sur by virtue of Republic Act Number 2228. The natural attractions um, you can see in Lano del Norte is, um, the Mar are the Maria Cristina Falls, a waterfall of the Agos River. It is sometimes called the Twin Falls as the flow is separated by a rock at the brink of the waterfall. You can see there are two um, two area where the water flows. That's why there, it was called the Twin Falls. Next is the Tinago Falls. It is one of the main tourist attraction in Iligan, a city known as the City of Magic Stick Waterfalls. And next is the Mount Agad Agad. It is the highest point in the Iligan area, which provides a spectacular view of the surrounding city and countryside. Next is the Timuga Cold Spring. It was really my first time having the spring that's very cold, like um, how many degrees I can ident identify because I, I was freeze there and that, that was really a clear icy cold water it is from Lake Lanao which is known to be the largest freshwater lake in the Philippines next is the historical attraction the Fort Almonte it is the repertory of the Spaniards during World War II next is the cultural attractions the cultural attractions are you can see the Norte National Comprehensive High School. It is a venue of the Central Mindanao Athletic Association, the CMRAA. The festival that they celebrated in that province is Alimango Festival. It is aligned with the trust of the National Leadership and the Department of Tourism to promote and enhance a community-based development and sustainable tourism. The history of Misamis was divided into two parts. And it is Misamis Occidental and Misamis Oriental through Act Number 3537. So let me tell you to Misamis Occidental. Misamis Occidental is known as Christmas capital of Mindanao. It is a province located in the region of northern Mindanao, and its capital is the city of Oroqueta. Misamis Occidental is known to its neighbors for beautiful waters and bountiful fish and seafood for export. Misamis Occidental was founded on 19. 29. Thus, there are five outlying islands surrounding the mainland of Misamis Occidental, and these are Paubawan Island, Kapgan Island, Naburos Island, Napothao Island, and New Cartagena. Let me show you the cultural attraction and fiestas in Misamis Occidental. Onsami City's Immaculate Conception Cathedral is the home of the second largest pipe organ in the Philippines. It is one among the very few pipes organ in the country and only existing in the island of Mindanao. Osami City Immaculate Conception Cathedral is one of the top tourist spots in Occidental, both local and foreign tourists. Most Catholics come here to pay devotion to the Virgin Mary. Its stunning architecture is also a must-see. Second one is Sinabakan Fluvial Procession. It is a event practiced by the Aglipayan Catholics of Sinabacan honoring Saint Joseph, Subayin King Subanon Festival, featuring Lumats or indigenous people known as Subanon. Their cultural values and tradition a name derived from the Visaya word Suba or river, were known as a river people. The Feast of Our Lady of Triumph at Kota Shrine is celebrated every July 16, which is also the, Car the Charter City Anniversary. Next is Pas Onko SG Misamis Occidental Festival of All Festivals. 
These festivals com commemorate the founding anniversary of the province. Pas Onko is its sovereign word for Thanksgiving. Next is Dalit Festival. This festival celebrates the feast of Saint Michael the Archangel. Dalit means offering. Now, let's go to Misamis Oriental. Cagayan de Oro is its capital city. This city, located on the north northeastern coast of the province of Misamis Oriental. Let me show you the historical attraction of Misamis Oriental. First one is century-old Nazareno Dam. It's an irrigation canal which is considered as one of the best in the Philippines without the aid of the sophistication machinery. And this was built by Laredel. Next is Bukagan Hill in Malaubang, Ozami City. Out of this 92, atop this 92 meters hill are four massive bell named St. Peter, St. Marian, St. Joseph, and St. Michael. Next is the Fort Santiago Cota in Ozami City. This fort is an officially declared historical landmark. It was built in 1756 by Jesuit Father Jose Ducos as defense against marauding Muslim pirates. And let me show you the natural attraction of Misamis Oriental. This one is Sipaka Point, known as a strong undersea current. The spot is good for more experienced divers. Now, let's go to cultural attraction of Misamis Oriental. First one is Pudyaka Festival. In Misamis Oriental, the provincial town of Lagindangan is on July 12. The word Hundayaka means revelry or celebration. Next is Vegan Ancestral House. This is one of the first transition behind the Bato inspired houses that has been standing through times and witnessed the different colonial periods of the Philippines in its 200 years of existence. It's located at Balingasag, Misamis Oriental. Your travel cannot be completed without knowing the delicacies in Region 10. And these are the exotic delicacies in Region 10. The first one is Pinacitas. A pineapple-based product is one of the famous delicacies in Bukidnon, the pineapple capital of Asia and food basket of Mindanao. The next one is binaki, or sweet tamales. It's a kakanin from Bukidnon and it came from the word baki, which means frog. This delicacy may have got its name due to its appearance. It is wrapped in corn husk and folded in the shape of a frog. And the last one is dudol. Is the most popular rice-based delicacy in Lanao. It is often served in a special occasion of Maranao such as wedding, festas, birthdays, and etc. It is made from sticky rice flour, coconut milk, and sugar. Other are durian to make it more delicious. These are the notable person that live in Misamis Oriental and Occidental. First one is Emmanuel Mani da Pidral Pacquiao. He was born in Kibawi, Bukidnon. He is a Filipino professional boxer and he is a former world champion at IBF Super Bantamweight in WBC Flyweight Division. Next one is Emmanuel Pelaez. He came from Misamis Oriental who almost became the president of the Philippines. But became the seventh vice president of the Philippines. Mayong Adlaw Kaginyatugan Bati sa Northern Mindanao Region 10. Language is important in our daily life. So, if you want to go to another place with different people in different dialect, you should know the basic languages that they use. Example, in Region 10, they have many languages that they use. And these are Cebuano, Maranao, Subanen, Higaunon, Bukid, and Iranon. So let me describe uh, their different languages. First one is Cebuano. Cebuano is natively called by its generic term Bisaya or Binisaya. It is an Austronesian language spoken in Southern Philippines. If you're curious what is Austronesian language, it is a language that family widely spoken. The second is Maranao. Maranao language spoken by Maranao people. Third one is Subanen. Subanen often described as a single language. They were considered by linguistics as a dialect cluster more than monolithic language. Next is Higaunon. Higaunon is a Manubo language spoken on the island of Mindanao. So, uh, next is Bukid. Binukid or Bukidnon spoken by indigenous people. The word Bukid means mountain or highland. 
while binakid means in the manners or style of the mountain or highland. The last one is Iranun, also known as Iranun or Ilyanun. It is the second most spoken language in Maguindanao.